In the eyes of car enthusiasts, Alfa Romeo is like a deity, a legendary maker of beautiful sports cars that dominated the racing scene like no other. But that was a long time ago, like before my grandfather even has his cubes yet. In recent history, however, most of their new models are nowhere near the praise and mythical status that people still like to bestow upon them. Luckily, there were a few good ones too, so let's talk about those. Hey guys, type here with a list of seven modern Alfa Romeos that don't suck. Let's go. 155Q4. The 155 sucks. After Fiat took over, they had just one goal for Alpha, make it profitable again. How? By basing future models, including the 155, on the crummy Fiat Tipo platform. And so gone was the rear wheel drive, and with it, the sweet power slides too. Gone was also the transaxle configuration, or in other words, having a gearbox at the rear for better weight distribution. Basically, gone was everything that made Alphas so loved by the enthusiast, even if they were breaking down every second Thursday of the month. Luckily, the 155Q4 was different because underneath that Minecraft looking body lay the Lencia Delta Integrale, a car that won the World Rallying Championship six times in a row. Okay, it wasn't the same same thing. Alpha was considerably heavier, and it was still an executive saloon with a noticeably softer electronically adjustable suspension. But the effects of having these race bred internals profoundly changed the way it drives. Thanks to a permanent all wheel drive, the grip was phenomenal, revised handling was light and precise, and the lively turbocharged Delta engine made it feel like an overly excited dog that's constantly pulling on the leash to go faster. Come on, come on, come on, let's go! Just how good the 155 Integrale was speaks to the fact that the racing version dominated the British, Spanish, Italian, as well as the German Touring Car Championship. Yep, it beat the M3. That's as high praise as any car can get. 4C was a hardcore, no-nonsense speed machine meant to please the enthusiast demanding from Alpha to go back to its sporty roots. And then, when it did, the car ended up being less popular than that fat British asshole with the JC initials, James Corden. It's not that the 4C was a bad sports car, far from it, it just had that price was too damn high, especially for what you're getting in return. For $60,000, Alpha was selling a tiny car with a tiny 1.7 liter four cylinder with just 240 horses. Compared to a, let's say Corvette, it's like the worst deal ever. However, the lack of power isn't such a big problem when you put the car on a stricter diet than your average fashion model. I'm talking carbon fiber being used for almost everything, chassis, body, as well as those hornet infested looking headlights. That's some expensive stuff. The interior was also naked. It's probably the best description and very outdated too. Look at these switches and the radio. Seriously, what year is this? However, when it comes to driving, few other cars were as exhilarating as the 4C. All this lightness meant zero to 60 in a little over four seconds in the change of direction at the speed of a hummingbird on cocaine. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. It is driving Nirvana for like two hours or so. After that, the unforgiving suspension in the hard seats will make your ass hurt more than a visit to a proctologist. Also, no power steering either. What year is it? Spider Duetto. But here's the thing, you don't need to drive everywhere like you're doing that Irish dance in order to enjoy your car. Cruising around slowly can be fun too, especially if you're in this thing, the Spider Duetto. Now, before you start complaining that this isn't a modern alpha, let me remind you that Duetto stayed in production until 1993, so it checks out. I'll allow it. Naturally, Alpha gave it a few updates, like better engines, bigger wheels, and safer, uglier bumpers. But in essence, these two are the same car, and neither of them is a sports car like a Miata. No, 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 these Alphas were made for savoring the road, like you would savor a glass of fine wine, not attack it. Duetto is for enjoying the moment, not creating drama. It's a car that reminds you how life is beautiful, and you should sit back relax, and enjoy it in style. Works well on the girls, too. Picture this, it's a hot summer day and you have a beautiful young lady waiting for you to pick her up. There is no better car to do it in than this one. Forget your GTR, your Lam Lam, your Mercedes ass class. If you want to arrive with class, Duetto is the one to take. So yeah, this not so modern, modern alpha is still the greatest alpha for anyone who just can't be bothered with who Renee Zellweger is dating these days. Who the f is Renee Zellweger? 
147 GTA. On the other side of the Duetto is this, the 147 GTA. A car not to enjoy life, but to end it in a climax of power and noise and probably fire too. As manufacturers continue to cram more and more power into front wheel drive hot hatchbacks, a particular problem became more apparent, torque steer. At least over 200 horses through the fronts, and the steering wheel would suddenly twitch in the wrong direction. Whoa! Solution? All-wheel drive or a tricked-out front differential, none of which were installed in this Alpha. What was installed, however, was an engine that gave the 147 more power than any of its rivals. I'm talking, of course, about the big Busso 3.2 V6 with the chromed inlets and a sound to die for. Now you know why they call these engines Busso's violins. As you can imagine, it was an exciting car to drive in the same way it's exciting to swim with sharks. You never know when one of them will suddenly twitch in your direction. That's bad, of course, but is it really? Think about it. If you're buying a hot hatchback, you're not being the most sensible that you can be. So why not go all the way and get yourself the GTA? It looks great, it sounds amazing, and it will overdose you with adrenaline. It's a car for people who like to stick it in crazy. And for the rest of y'all, well, you can go back to your boring lives. Stelvio. I know, I know. How could you put an SUV on this list, Stipe? Those things are everything that's wrong with the car world these days. Well, no. Customers are what's wrong because they keep asking for them. Besides, having a successful SUV is a blessing for any car company. Take Porsche, for example. Despite dominating the world of motorsport and having some of the best performance cars on offer, they still barely stayed alive. That all changed when the Cayenne was released. Suddenly, tons of money, money that funded the development of some truly amazing cars. So if you want Alpha to do the same, you have to let him earn some cash first. I gotta do it, man. As it turns out, Stelvio is doing just that. After decades of underperforming sales and leeching off of its parent companies, it was reported that in 2022, Alfa Romeo had finally become profitable. That means the future is secure and more enthusiast models are on the way. So how about a thank you, Stelvio? I guess I could say a few words about it while I'm here. Looks like a bloated Julia. Drives better than most SUVs thanks to a platform co-developed by Ferrari. And the sporty model once held the SUV track record around the Nürburgring. Great if you're the sort of person who cares about such nonsense. Everyone else will be more impressed by the fact that the quality has improved vastly. Turns out Stelvio is the first Alva that won't make your driveway look like a BP oil spill. 8C Competizione. The early 2000s were particularly bleak if you were an Alpha fan. Just a bunch of front wheel drive cars with an occasional V6 to spruce things up, but nothing to dream about. There was no special model like the Montreal, the 33 Stradale, or even the weird Zagato stuff. And then the 8C showed up to fill that void. How big of a void? Well, all 500 were sold out before they were even shown to the public. Now, before continuing, let's address the elephant in the room. How pretty is that? From every angle, it's just pure beauty, elegance, and curves. Makes Kate Upton look flat. And extra points for the simplicity of this design. There are no excessive details, no rawr aggression. Just a clean, perfect shape. But the beauty wasn't just skin deep, because underneath that swooping long hood beats a Ferrari V8 heart with a cross plane. Now that was aggressive. <laughs> As before, the transmission was at the back. The weight balance was a bang on 50-50 and the carbon fiber was used all throughout. It's a recipe for driving perfection, which the 8C sadly wasn't. As reported by many, it was just too twitchy and unpredictable at the limit. But you know what? I wouldn't care at all. This is more of a grand tour than a boy racer and doing all the rude stuff with such a car would be like French kissing a granny. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? Now, before I reveal my number one, here are some honorable mentions. See if you can guess them. And at number one, Julia Quadrifoglio. This thing may have Alfa Romeo badges, but really it's a four-door Ferrari. Check this out. The Julius development was helmed by a former chief technical engineer from Ferrari. The all new 500 horsepower twin turbo V6 is coincidentally the exact same as the twin turbo V8 from the California T. 
minus the two cylinders. Carbon fiber is used for the hood, roof, drive shaft, seats, and more, but all the aluminum parts, which make up 85% of the car, were done where? Ferrari's foundry. The active aerodynamics were tuned in, Ferrari's F1 wind tunnel. The chassis, suspension, and driveline were also developed by, you already know. Put all this together and Julia's rivals stood no chance at all. The four-door Ferrari was faster, sharper, lighter, and more powerful than any of them. And you gotta respect the way Alpha introduced this model. It wasn't like, here's our new car and later we'll turn it into a faster version. No, the fast one was the standard model here. That's what it was developed to be. Only later, a few nerfed versions were spawned from it too. Granted, they did a more hardcore GTA M Julia too, which ditched the rear seats, but brought in more power and a body kit inspired by women's lingerie. Or maybe I'm just imagining that part. Only 500 of these were ever made. And as with the 8C, they were all sold before the public even heard about them. Why am I not surprised? Anyway, that's the list. Now go watch something else until I see you in the next one.